Hello everyone. So I'm back with part two of our topic of discussion that was uh, calcium deficiency and its related disorder. So today we were going to discuss uh, about the pathophysiology of rickets and osteomalacia. What is the actual difference between rickets and osteomalacia? So let's get started. Now the cause of the faulty process of bone mineralization is due to deficient or impaired metabolism of vitamin D or phosphate or calcium. We all know that. And the consequence is either it is rickets in children or osteomalacia in adults. So rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults. Now we will discuss a little bit of anatomy which is relevant uh, in this topic. So we all know the anatomy of um, long bone such as femur. So I have drawn a picture here. Here, the ends of the long bone, such as femur, are called here in this region. This region is called epiphysis, and the shaft is called diaphysis. In between this diaphysis and epiphysis, two regions layer. These regions are called metaphysis, and these metaphyses contains few plates. Here, few plates are there in metaphyseal region, and these plates are called metaphyseal plates or growth plates. Now what happens when the bone stops growing, these metaphyseal plates are replaced by, metaphyseal plates are replaced by fine lines. Metaphyseal plates are replaced by lines. So this, this is called metaphyseal closure. So what's the relevance of this uh, anatomy with this rickets and osteomalacia? Now we will going to discuss that. Before discussing that, I would like to say about bone mineralization. So there is a question, what is bone mineralization? So we all know that there are some specialized cells in the bone. Those are called osteoblasts. Specialized cells of the bone are called osteoblasts. They actually help in building bone. Okay. So these osteoblast cells, they secrete some kind of organic material that is called osteoids. So osteoblast cells secrete some organic material, these are called osteoids. These osteoids are made up of type 1 collagens. Okay. Now what happens next, these osteoblast cells, they just drag calcium and phosphates from the bloodstream to the, this framework made up of osteoids and all the calcium and phosphates are stored in the matrix or framework of the bone. Okay, this process is called bone mineralization. Okay, so bone mineralization actually strengthens the bone. It causes strengthening of bone. There is an uh, enzyme that is called alkaline phosphatase. This alkaline phosphatase enzyme actually, it has an important role in bone mineralization. And the activity of alkaline phosphatase is dependent upon these osteoblast cells. So we have discussed this process in a very brief manner. Now, I would like to tell you some important points about osteomalacia and rickets. What is the basic difference between these two diseases? Okay, so rickets is a disorder. Rickets is a disorder of impaired mineralization of cartilaginous growth plates. For the pathophysiology of rickets, we know that ricket is a disorder of inadequate mineralization of the growing long bones at cartilaginous growth plates. So let's get started. So there is defective mineralization of the bone matrix at growth plates and growth plate cartilage and osteoid continues to expand but mineralization is inadequate. This leads to two incidents. One is bones are soft and number two is bones weak increases at growth plates and the distal end of the metaphysis. Okay. So when the bones become soft, the bony deformities could be seen and fractures could be seen. What happens when the bone width increases at growth plates and in the distal end of the metaphysis, we can see the widened and expanding of the breast joint and ankle joints. Okay. So this we will discuss in detail. So I have drawn a picture of a long bone, such as femur. This is epiphysis, this is diaphysis, and in between these two, that is metaphysial region. And the metaphysial region contains growth plates or metaphysial plates, we all know that. What happens next? If we zoom in, so this is the picture we can get. Okay, this is epiphysial region, this is diaphysial region, this is metaphysis region. Now come to the point. This diaphysial region, 
which contains five zones. So zone one is resting cartilage. Okay, that contains one of two lines. The cells are in resting phase. This is resting cartilage. Next zone is number two zone is proliferating cartilage, and there the cells are proliferating in nature. Okay. Next number three zone is hypertrophic cartilage. So the cells are big enough. The volumes are increased. Okay. Number four zone is important for this pathophysiology of the case. What happens? This uh, zone is called zone of necrosis and relaxation. That means the name suggests what the uh, zone of necrosis. That means the cells are necrosed, and the zone of mineralization. That means uh, the minerals are trapped into this zone. Yes, uh, the minerals are phosphorus and phosphorus all are trapped into this zone, and thus the zone, uh, cells become necrosed. Actually, the cells die. So the cells are apoptotic cells. But the name is necrosis. Okay. What happens next? The necrosols then thus get get ossified. Necrosols get ossified, and this thus become number five zone is formed. That is ossified zone. What happens in case of inadequate mineralization, such as in rickets? So in rickets, inadequate mineralization. So this zone is not formed as phosphate and phosphorus could not get trapped into this fourth zone, zone of necrosis and mineralization. So uh, this ossified zone is not formed. As a consequence, the upper three zones are just proliferating, resting phase, and hypertrophic cells. They continue to grow. So these become expanding. The upper zones become expanding. That is why it is written bone weak at increases at growth plates and distal end of the metamorphosis. So this region is distal end of the metamorphosis. So bone weak is bone weak increases at this plate. Okay. So that is all about. Pathophysiology of the case in a very short manner.